Hey there Internet, I'm Michael and this is Two Can Play That Game. And today we are starting our series of videos looking at another game and this time it's Dungeon Roll. So obviously this being my first video I'm going to be teaching you how to play this game and then in the next video you'll be able to see it being played and the final video will of course be my review of the game where you can find out my thoughts and of course whether or not two can play that game. Now in short Dungeon Roll is a push your luck dice rolling game set in a dungeon. Now I would say look at the box cover but this doesn't really have a box cover, it's just a treasure chest. That also tells you a lot about this game because a lot of what you're trying to do is get treasure. But why don't we take it to the table and you can see a bit more detail about exactly how you push your luck and roll the dice in Dungeon Roll. Welcome to the table for how to play Dungeon Roll. So first thing we wanted to go through is how do you set up the game? Well, first thing you'll need to do is empty the game box, this treasure chest here. And that's because it is actually used as a component in the game. And once you've emptied it, you then want to put all the treasure tokens back inside. And that will then be shaken up to mix all those tokens up nicely. And then when you draw treasure, you'll be drawing them out of the chest. Next, you'll need to give each player one of these hero cards. So you can see here, there are quite a few to choose from. You can pick which ones people get, or you can just shuffle them up and deal one randomly to each player. So I'm gonna set up here for a one player game and I've just shuffled these cards and then this is gonna be my hero. So we have here the spell sword. So you just need to put that on the table in front of you and you'll need to read the special abilities for it and you need to make sure that you have the novice side up. Now the way you can tell is the experience side has a different border and also on the novice side you will see 5 XP to level up at the bottom of the card so you know that that's to level up. Next you need to determine who's going to be the first adventurer and the way this is determined according to the rules is that person who was most recently underground will go first. Personally I say just pick at random. Then you need to pick your first dungeon lord. Now, as I'm playing a one player game, obviously I'll be the first person delving the dungeon and I'll also be the dungeon lord. If this was a two player or more game, the dungeon lord would be the person to the dungeon delvers left. Next, you'll need to put the dice in front of the various people. So these black dice are the dungeon dice and they will go to the dungeon lord. These white dice, are the adventurer dice and they'll go to the person who's delving into the dungeon. And the other dice in the game is this D10. And this is used to represent the level of the dungeon. So for a person's first delve in, you'll want to make sure it is set to the one. So we will sit that there to show what level of the dungeon we are in. Next, I would recommend giving one of the player aid cards to each of the players and um, one side tells you what will destroy what as well as giving you some of the details on what the dice do and on the other side it's got a description of what all the treasure tokens can do so very useful to keep at hand and finally you'll need to make sure that these XP tokens are with easy reach of all players now the goal of the game is to get as much XP as you can in free attempts at delving into the dungeon and the way that will work is the first person will do their first attempt delving into the dungeon and then the next peep it will go round to the table going to the left and of course the dungeon lord role will also move round the table 
to the left. Once each player has done their free delves, you will then compare XP scores and whoever has the most is the winner. So the first thing you'll need to do in a turn is to form your party. To do this, the person who is delving into the dungeon will take their seven adventurer dice, shake them up and roll them out. And then this will be your starting party of adventurers that you are using for this delve. Additionally, some cards such as the Spell Sword have an ability that you exhaust the character card by turning it sideways in order to use. If you do have your character exhausted at this stage, you would simply refresh the hero. So let's get these out of the dice tray here and we can go through what each of these dice represent. So at the top here we have a cleric symbol and they are good for defeating skeletons. Now you can tell this because they are colour coded as grey and the skeletons will also be colour coded as such. Next we have the rogue member of the party and they are good for gathering treasure chests. Then we have a mage and they are good for defeating oozes. Next we have the fighter and the fighter takes out goblins. And then the final one we have at the bottom here are the best and they are champions. They are good at killing everything. So we have here the scroll, which can be used to reroll any number of your party dice, but only your active party dice. You will never be able to. So, say we had two exhausted dice here, we would not be able to reroll those. But you can reroll any number of your active party dice that you choose by expending a scroll to your exhausted area. Additionally, the scroll will also allow you to reroll. The dungeon dice if you wanted. So say I didn't like this result, I could exhaust that and re-roll those dice. So with the player area set out, the dungeon lord would then set up the dungeon. So we start with it at level one as we've already placed and the level of the dungeon means that the dungeon lord would roll one dice. If it was two, level two they'd roll two dice. So let's talk a bit about the different options of results on this dice. So what I've rolled here is a dragon. If you roll any dragon symbols, you will place the die on the hero card. If during the dragon phase, you have three or more dice with the dragon symbol on the hero card, which is called the dragon's lair, you summon the dragon and must fight it. And I'll talk about that more in a bit. So next we have the green goblin, which are killed by fighters. We then have the grey skeletons, which are killed by clerics. The purple oozes, which are killed by mages and the pink treasure chests which are opened by rogues. And also on the dungeon dice you will find a potion symbol. Now potions allow you to revive dead heroes and any adventurer dice will be able to drink any number of potions including one scroll. Now any one dice can be used to resolve any one other dice. But when I say about a dice being good, I'm talking about in the monster phase. So let's say we were a bit later in the game. So let's say we were at level three and the dice that had been rolled were three goblins. Now fighting these, any three dice could be removed from the party to show to defeat 
those three dice. However, you can remove one of the same colour. So as this is goblins, it would be green. You can remove one of the correct dice, so a fighter. One fighter can defeat all goblins there. So it's a much more efficient use of your dice if you use the correct colour. Now, this is where the player aid becomes very useful because you can see when it has the three blocks, that means that that colour will defeat all of that colour. So you can see grey defeats all of grey, purple defeats all of purple, etc. Now, as you can see, the champions are marked as asterisks and all three. This is because each champion may defeat all monsters of any one type. Now, that doesn't mean that, say, we had these dice here, that one champion would defeat all of those. No, what it would do is you could use one champion to defeat both of those goblins and then one any one dice to defeat the ooze. So you could even use this fighter to defeat that ooze if you wanted. And so that is how your monster phase will work. You'll spend your dice to defeat those. And of course, you have special abilities on your player card that you will also potentially be able to use. Now, if you're not able to defeat all the monsters that are in this level of the dungeon, then you must flee the dungeon. And this will immediately end your go and you'll gain no experience, which is obviously a very bad thing as the aim of the game is to gain experience. So during your monster phase, you'll be able to use your scrolls to re-roll your party dice or your dungeon dice. You'll also be able to use your hero abilities, assuming it's not a hero ability that you've had to exhaust to be able to use. Then once you have dealt with all the monsters, so let's say we were on level four and we'd roll these dice here. So we've got two monsters here and two potions. We would use two dice to defeat the two monsters, so they would go away, and then we'd be left with these two potions. This would then be the loot phase once all the monsters are defeated. And at this point, if there were any treasure chests, which are the pink chests, we would be able to open those, which if we had a rogue, they'd be able to open any number of chests with one dice. Otherwise, each party member can only open one chest. Of course, champions are wild, so they could be used as a rogue. And when you open treasure chests, what you will do is you'll remove those dungeon dice, shake up the box, reach your hand in without looking, and draw a treasure token per treasure chest that you opened. And as I've said, the player aid will tell you what all of these treasure tokens actually do. But then we're still left with these potions here. Now, any dice can be used to drink any number of potions, including a scroll dice. So I could use this scroll to drink two potions, and that would allow me to revive two of my dice from my expended area. And when I do this, I get to choose what face that die would be. So I could keep them what they were in my expended area, or I could change them to be whatever I wanted. So if I wanted more champions, I could just go, there we go, two more champions join my team. It's important to note that you don't have to drink the potions or open the chests. You can choose to not expend a dice on those chests and ignore those chests so that you keep the dice in front of you. And the same, of course, with the potions. So I said earlier about a situation where you have three dragons in your dragon lair. Now, once you've done your looting, this is when you would then resolve those dice. And this is the dragon phase. So what would happen is these would go into the dungeon and you would have to fight the dragon. Now, it doesn't matter if you have three or four or 
even seven dice showing the dragon symbol, there's, you're still only fighting one dragon. To fight the dragon, you must use three different types of companions. And there are treasure tokens that act as companions which can be used. Now, you cannot use three champions as three different wilds to defeat the dragon. Champions still would only count as one type, so you would need a champion plus two others. You couldn't use three champions. They all must be different type of adventurers in order to defeat the dragon. However, when you defeat the dragon, you will return these dice to the available pool for the Dungeon Lord to roll, and you will also get to draw a treasure from the box. And this represents the treasure that was in the Dragon's Hoard. Additionally, you'll earn a single XP token you'll get to sit in front of you. Now, of course, this dragon phase only happens if there were three dragons in the dragon's lair. If there were one or two dragons in the dragon's lair, they would simply stay there. Now, at this point, you have the regroup phase where you have three choices. You can either retire to the tavern, at which point you will get a number of XP as equal to the number of the level of dungeon you just defeated and that would be the end of your turn and play would proceed round the table. If you get to the point where the dungeon dice is at level 10, represented by a dragon, you must leave the dungeon. But you would get 10 XP for that. However, if you're not at level 10, say we were at that level 3, we could then choose to delve deeper into the dungeon, at which point the dungeon dice would go up and we would then have the Dungeon Lord roll dice again, and we would try and defeat them with our available heroes. Of course, any one dice that we've already expended, we will no longer have available to defeat the new monsters. And then you would repeat this process for each delve for each player, until each player has completed their three delves. At which point you'll just compare who has the most XP, and that player is the winner. Now, with your hero cards, I said earlier about the novice side having the 5 XP to level up on. You do not spend the XP in order to do that level up. So let's say I had received 5 XP, I would immediately flip my hero card to the advanced side, which would give me more advanced powers to use for my later delves. It does not require me to discard any XP to do that. It happens automatically. And that is how you play Dungeon Roll. I do hope that you have found this video entertaining and useful. And of course, if you have, please do check out the rest of the videos on the channel and share this video with your friends and family. And of course, please do subscribe to the channel and also check us out on social media. We are at Facebook, and also on Twitter. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.